Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Alberta News and Views. Today, Amnesty International had a press conference and they're talking about human rights in Canada. I want to show you a small clip of this because the irony of it. She says that Canada, indirectly, she says Canada is failing in terms of human rights. That's what I got from it. We're going to watch that in one second. But first, I'm going to do a little bit of an information dump on you. Today, Justin Trudeau had a, had a an update to his defense policy. It's brutal. Canada's new defense policy will focus on securing the Arctic and fixing the unsustainable gap in the force size. Nobody's joining the military. It's at like crisis levels right now. All of our allies are screaming at Canada to meet our 2% commitment in NATO because if we don't, it's going to fail. It's going to crumble because they're trying to expand NATO right now, but they need the money and the resources. There's no recruitment in Canada. One of the main reasons is, is because of Trudeau's policies, like the tampons in the men's washroom and the fact that we, we lack a national identity in Canada. What is Canada? Nobody really knows anymore because there's so many people that have immigrated into Canada and it is so broken up now. It doesn't have an identity or an integration policy. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of this. So the updated policy called Our North Strong and Free promises $8.1 billion in further investments in Canada's defense capabilities over the next five years in addition to major equipment purchases such as a new fleet of F-35 fighter jets and upgrading NORAD equipment. Don't forget, Trudeau did not want the F-35 fighter jets. He said he wasn't going to buy them, and that was an election promise back in the day. But then he flip-flopped, wants to buy the F-35s now at an increased price point, which is absolutely ridiculous. It's so Trudeau. Despite the new plan spending, Canada's defense spending will still only reach 1.76% of its GDP by 2029, 20, uh, 2030, according to the document, meaning the country still has no timeline for when it will hit the 2% target NATO members committed to in 2023. I was going to show you a clip from the press conference with him talking about that. I'm just going to save you guys. I, I just can't stand watching him anymore. It's, it's just lies, 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 lies. And it's so bad. And it's so obvious. I just can't take it. Because of stuff like this. Check this out. Blacklocks reporter. Hot off the press. Remember those ventilators that Justin Trudeau bought? Those ventilators cost millions of dollars. And now they are sold as scrap metal. Pandemic ventilators bought from, from a Toronto company by the public health agency under a $169.5 million sole source contract were sold as scrap metal. The records show Prime Minister Justin Trudeau had praised the manufacturer by name as a Canadian success story. Quote, this is exactly the kind of innovative and collaborative thinking we need. We are living in a time where they will, the news will just boast about conservatives losing $90,000 or wasting $100,000. But then... When stuff like this comes out, $169.5 million, that is unbelievable. We never hear about this. Who got that money? Who got that money? It, 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 it goes along the same thought pattern as how does a prime minister make an extra $10 million in a few years on a salary of only $400,000? You know, nobody ever asked the obvious questions. Check this out, because this is just, just another thing. Amnesty, as you know, is the largest global human rights organization with over 10 million around the world, people around the world, and tens of thousands in Canada alone. We will be publishing our global review of human rights later this month, but our focus today is domestic and reviews Canada's adherence to its international human rights obligations. This agenda reflects that although Canada made some advances from 2022, these remain insufficient and too slow to match the glaring human rights needs across the country, particularly against the backdrop of global turbulence. More than ever, a world in turmoil demands that countries like Canada practice human rights at home, not only because it is the right and humane thing to do, but also because it is the smart thing to do. 
Human rights are the blueprint for a prosperous, peaceful, and sustainable society where all citizens live in dignity and in decency. This is crucial beyond Canadian borders as well. Without success at home, or by prioritizing some rights over others, Canada cannot be a credible and influential interlocutor on human rights on the global stage. And this is at a time when the world desperately needs one. Canada is not there yet, Bam. but we hope that our concrete calls are a helpful start. It's crazy. Everybody in Canada knows that some groups have more rights than other groups, and the company that the Trudeau government keeps does not care about human rights, like China. He needs to stop dealing with China at a time when China says they want a closer relationship with Canada. Well, at the same time, we are going through our independent public inquiry into Chinese election interference, or just election interference, I should say. It's crazy. The, the whole world, the spectrum of the whole world in business is changing. And I'm telling you, the, these globalist investment firms, the banks, a lot of the reports that I'm reading, they're all saying that growth looks good, technology good, artificial intelligence bad, and po political policies are destroying societal fabrics right now. And they are very worried about it because, like I've said before, I think all of them tried an experiment and it failed. They lost a bazillion dollars. They're seeing civil unrest and they're lo they've lost control. And now all of them are scared. And then you have prime ministers like Justin Trudeau. He just doesn't care. He's going full bore. He's still doing it. Everybody, over 70% of Canadians do not want this carbon tax. They don't want the this online censorship. They don't want so many of these agendas being forced on them, but he is doing it anyway. And the world is noticing. They really are. There's an article that says um, Canada is a perfect model of what not to be. They're, they're all watching us <laughs> because of um, the policies that the Trudeau government has implemented. They're not working and they're disastrous. I'm going to keep you updated, as always, with all of this stuff as much as I can, when I can. Follow me on Substack and Spotify. All of you out there, like, share, and take care.